welcome at the next part of the lecture finite elements methods. Today we consider finite element solution of the poisson kemholz equation minus uh, Laplacian of u plus sigma u equals f in the space of bilinear splines. Let us solve the following boundary value problem. The Hemholtz equation minus second derivative u with respect to x minus second derivative u with respect to y plus sigma u equals f in uh, the main omega and on the boundary we have homogeneous boundary conditions on the on the boundary d omega. This uh, boundary value problem we shall solve in the by finite elements method using bilinear splines. We assume that sigma is non-negative function and f of x are continuous functions given in the square omega with the side 1. As it is known, the operator L minus Laplacian plus sigma u positive sigma is positive definite in the space of L2 on omega of all functions integrable with squares. That is, there exists a constant, positive constant gamma, such that the product image v, LV times V is greater or equal the positive constant gamma times the norm of V for all the functions V in C02 on omega. Therefore, we can use Ritz Galer or Galerkin's method to find the approximate solution UN. Following the Galerkin's method, let us re uh, replace equation 1 by the variational form, by its variational form. We know from the previous lectures that the variational form of that equation is the integral over omega of this very expression and uh, this uh, right hand side is f eta for all eta in w02 uh, space in the Sp Sobolev uh, space w012 on omega this is the energetic space generated by the positive de or definite operator L. Then we find the approximate solution in the form of linear combination of the coordinates Fij, where um, this uh, coordinates uh, these coordinates are uh, given here. It is a product of psi i of x times psi j of x where psi i psi j are reads coordinates in the space s1 delta x0 and in the space s1 delta y0 of linear splines respectively so the space um, in which we determine the uh, approximate solution by garrick reads method is the uh, um, finite dimensional space capital X N N, uh, which is S11 delta 00, zero spent on the very uh, coordinates we have here mm, uh, clarified. Good. So, because we have boundary value conditions, then from the boundary conditions, straightforward we find that uh, the coefficients with zero for all j are zeros and uh, coefficient at the point one for all, all y uh, uh, when we have here index n are also zero and the same on other side of the uh, of the square omega so that is forward uh, substitution um, to uh, to the um, linear uh, combination to this form 
uh, the uh, value for x equals 0, x equals 1, or for y equals 0 or y equals 1 to get that um, form. So the form of the approximate solution is, uh, is of this size. We, we start from 1, not from 0 as before, and we end at n minus 1, uh, not at n as before, because of the co coefficients a 0, j r 0, a n j r 0, and the same a i 0 and a i n are also 0. But at the point x equals to, to 0, um, and y uh, is uh, a, a node on the boundary, the value is 0, is 1 in the case. So that is clear, I hope. So where these very coefficients are determined by Galerkin's system of equations. So now the remaining coefficients, uh, in, uh, which are um, related with uh, um, interior points, uh, nodes, we, we determine by the uh, a variational equation by the system of equations. So when we substitute for eta the coordinates, we come to the variational form uh, for the coordinates, uh, which is in fact the system of linear equations, uh, as many equations as we have unknown, where um, ij is from uh, 1 to n minus 1, then we have uh, uh, this equation we can write in the matrix form. In the matrix form, a a equals b, where a is the vector with uh, sub vectors i uh, a i for i equals one. We have uh, the one vector for i equals two for i equals n minus one, and the same the right hand side is a vector or with com component sub-vectors we have here clarified. So the matrix uh, A is 3-diagonal block matrix, so that uh, on the diagonal we have block ma matrices, we clarified ju just before, below. So this matrix has the form, and that is the structure of the matrix, is a sparse matrix. So the entries of the matrix we have here are given by the following formula. That, that is, these details one can uh, check is, uh, to have it. So then uh, we have uh, capital R, R, A, R, S, I, J at the nodes I, J, the, the entries of the sub matrix, uh, block matrix are here. So that everything is given because coordinates are also given, as we know, and this have uh, we can evaluate it. We are able to get the values. So that values are here given, and um, that blocks uh, AI one one A two two and all of, and so on. They are th uh, th three diagonal blocks, uh, three diagonal matrices. So we have them here uh, in explicit uh, form. The, gra uh, the Gram's matrix A is positive definite. That is uh, known. That, that is known fact. Uh, Gram's matrix of uh, of the coordinates, which are non linear, uh, in linear independent. So that is positive definite. Therefore, the system of linear equations has. Uh, the unique solution, and this solution we, uh, ha we have here, a i j uh, star, so we get the approximate solution in the form of the linear combination. So I hope the idea of the method is very, is clear, how we get the approximate solution. We have to solve the system of linear equations with a block matrix A. Uh, that uh, that uh, system we can solve by a method, by Gauss-Seidel method, or by any iter iterative methods, or a straightforward um, uh, method uh, Gauss, uh, based on Gauss elimination. Now it's important to, to know the error estimate. 
So by the theorem on the error bounds of Ritz and Galerkin's methods, we remember the global error as a difference between exact solution and approximate solution satisfies the inequality that we know. We, we use that inequality and a number of times. So that error is less or equal than uh, every uh, eta from the uh, energetic space, uh, Sobolev space W01. So this error is less than uh, error uh, between uh, uh, every real function minus exact solution. Of course, it is in the in the uh, energetic norm in the L norm. <coughs> then this L norm we remind is that one, which uh, in which we have involved the first derivatives of the exact solution as well as the values of the function. So in the case to get the error bound let S be the linear spline interpolating to the exact solution. So we substitute in the uh, variational equation now the interpolating spline to the exact solution. So if we substitute for this eta S then we have we have S minus U in the energetic norm L, but this error of interpolation, as we know from the, uh, from the part of the lecture uh, when we have considered the, we had, uh, we considered the uh, error of interpolation by billionaire splines, is, is in the L norm, is a constant S, C times H times the norm of the Laplacian. Uh, in the L2 square, in fact. So, using uh, using seven that that inequality uh, with eta equals s, as we have said, we obtain the following error estimate. This error estimate, this is less or equal than this. So we can have error estimate by that for that uh, value. Good. So again, to say that the norm is the uh, here, this norm is here for uh, fixed exact solution U. So that is on the level H, uh, H, not H square, but because of the norm that uh, we estimate the error together with its first derivative because of the L norm. But Applying the Nietzsche analysis, as we did before for one variable, we get the following estimate of the global error uh, in, in, the for, uh, in the norm of the L2 space. So by Nietzsche procedure, Nietzsche analysis, we come from the norm L to the norm L square, without the first derivative, only the error alone, but we, uh, we have here H square uh, so that error of the method we have used, finite elements method, is on the level O capital O of H square. It tends to zero as fast as H square t tends to zero, where C is a generic constant independent on, on H. Thank you.